Hello, in this video we're going to talk about simple pendulums, their free body diagrams, their equations of motions, and how to solve the corresponding equations using MATLAB. So what is a simple pendulum? A simple pendulum is a mechanical system consisting of a cord or a rigid bar of the length L, and to one side of the cord we attach a bob of mass m. So why are simple pendulums important for us? Well, simple pendulums, or better to say their mathematical models, can be seen as simplified models of a large number of mechanical and electrical systems. Before I start with detailed explanations, I have to say that I have created a post with all the equations and all the, uh, all the explanations and a link to this post can be found in the description of this video. Figure A shows the free body diagram of the bob. Mg is the weight of the bob. N is the force that the cord exerts on the bob and the dashed line over here is the bob's trajectory. This is a circular trajectory. Figure B shows the kinetic diagram. To derive the equations of motion we start from the second Newton's law. So we can write mass times the acceleration vector is equal to sum of all the forces acting on the system, Fi. In our case, n is equal to 2 since we have only two forces acting on the bob. And we can write m times a equals n plus mg. The next step is to, is to introduce the coordinate system. This will be tau and this will be small n. So the tau and n are unit vectors, right? So the acceleration vector has two components, has a normal component and it has the, the tangential component. So we are going to project this equation onto the tangen tangential axis. So we can write m a tau equals to what? Let's see. So we are looking at the forces that have projections onto the tau axis. In this case, only the weight of the bob has a projection onto the tau axis. So its projection is minus mg sinus theta. Why we have sinus theta over here? Well, the angle over here is theta, right? So the projection of mg onto the tau axis is minus, it's equal to this part over here, it's minus mg sinus theta. This minus sign originates from the fact that its projection is in the negative direction of the tau axis. Now, masses cancel, right, since they appear on both sides of the equation. Now, the question is, what is a tau equal to? We know that velocity is equal to L times angular velocity, change of angle theta with respect to time. So theta dot is d theta over d t. Now, the 
Tangential acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity. So the first derivative of velocity since the length of the chord is constant is equal to L times theta two dots. By substituting this equation into this equation, we obtain our final equation. So we obtain L theta two dots is equal to minus g sinus theta. This equation can also be written in the following form. Theta two dots plus g over L sinus theta is equal to zero. So this is our equation of motion. The solution of this equation, the solution of this ordinary differential equation will give us theta as a function of time. In this video we will learn how to solve the equation of motion numerically using MATLAB. In order to solve this equation using MATLAB we need to define its state space model. So we need to define the state space model. In order to define the state space model, we need to introduce the state space variable. The first state space variable will be x1. x1 will be equal to theta. And the second state space variable, x2, will be equal to theta dot. By differentiating the first state space variable, x1, we can obtain x1 dot is equal to theta dot. Now, from this equation, we can see that theta dot is equal to x2, and by substituting in this equation, we will obtain x1 dot is equal to x2. So here is our first state space equation. Similarly, we obtain the second state space equation by differentiating x2. So x2 dot is equal to theta two dots. Now, from the equation of motion, we can express theta two dot as minus g over L sinus theta. Now, theta is equal to x1, so we obtain x2 dot is equal to minus g over L sinus x1. So this is our second state space equation. So we can write our equation of motion as a system of two first order differential equations. So we can write x1 dot is equal to x2 and x2 dot is equal to minus g over L sinus x1. Or in the vector form we have something that looks like this x2 minus g over l sinus x1 once we have written our equation of motion in a state space form we can easily solve it using MATLAB so here is our MATLAB script so the first step is to define a function defining a state space model. So here is the function, here is the MATLAB function. We define the mass of the pendulum, which we don't need. This was the error in my code, actually. It's not the error, so I don't need the mass. Uh, then we define the length of the chord. In our case, it will be 0 0.5 and we define the acceleration, the gravi gravitational acceleration, 9.81. And we define the state space equation. dx is basically your first derivative of, is basically a vector containing the first derivatives of x1 and x2. This is your right-hand side actually the left hand side and the right hand side is simply defined 
by this part over here that corresponds to this so you can see that x in brackets 2 comma 1 corresponds to x2 and x in brackets 1 comma 1 corresponds to x1 this function has two arguments the first argument is time the second argument is x and it's very important to save this function so you need to save this function i'll repeat the steps so you save it in a folder you save it now the next step is to say to matlab where is your function so you need to say to matlab that your function is basically stored in certain folder in my case it's the name of the folder is tmp pendulum and i will click on select folder and i will click on close and now matlab knows that where your function is being stored so if you enter in the command line of matlab if you call this function matlab will recognize that this function is stored in its path it gives an error since i didn't uh, give uh, all the arguments now in order to solve the equation you need to open a new MATLAB script you first need to define the time step then you need to time define the time vector the time vector contain contains discrete time instance at which we will approximate the solution you need to define the initial condition in our case it's 0 1 that is x1 is 0 x2 is 1 or theta is 0 and theta dot is 1 so we are looking at initially we are looking at pendulum in this position with some initial velocity and this initial velocity is equal to l times theta dot of zero or l times x2 so now the next step is basically to call the matlab ode45 solver the matlab ode45 sol solver has three arguments the first argument is the name of the function that is, defines your state space model that is that defines your dynamics the second function function is the time vector and the third argument is the initial condition so you can execute this piece of code and at the end you will obtain the solution the solution is nothing less than a matrix containing two columns the first column is x1 variable and the second column is the x2 variable and the time vector in our case will be equal to time vector you can also call od45 without the time vector and then it will give you a default time it will return your default time vector too now we plot r by executing this piece of code you can plot the variables and i obtain a diagram that looks like this the red line is theta and the black line is theta dot what is interesting to see from this graph when theta reaches its maximum theta dot is equal to zero and vice versa when theta dot is maximum is it, it has reaches its maximum theta is equal to zero why is that this will be all for today thank you very much for your attention